Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. The beauty of this is, anytime I sit here to minister God's truth, everything in me is alive. And what's it alive for? To receive all of God. Praise God. See, whenever we speak God's word, I'm not talking about speaking what we have crammed last night. <laughs> no. I'm saying, you know, you know, the, the, the way I prepare to teach God's word is this. I go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm about to teach your truth. What would you have me deal with? What would you have me say? See? And then I wait before him. I can pray in other tongues. I can worship. But I'm just waiting for his word to come to me. Now, sometimes I'll hear him say, son, I want you to talk about this. Like what we're dealing with today. I heard this several weeks ago. So when we're still on, on First Corinthians, I heard the Lord one day speak to me. He said, when you are done with this, I want you to begin to look at life lessons from the scripture. And he showed me the whole picture. I'm like, oh, wow. Right. See? Now, he told me that. But now, that's not even enough. Now, I'm, I, he had told me that before. Now, I'm preparing for that. Now, I begin to wait on the Lord. I said, Lord, what do we say today? And, and sometimes I hear him tell me, Talk, t deal on this story. And like he did some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you. But some other times, he, 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 he may not even say anything when I'm praying. But I just enjoy his fellowship. I enjoy his presence. But when I sit here, I begin to receive insight and inspiration, clarity from him. So as I hear, I speak. Praise God. And what does that mean? That means even you listening to me right now, if you need any miracle, See, because I'm receiving the word of God and you are receiving the word of God also. Not necessarily from me, but see, I'm creating the atmosphere for him to speak to you. So you begin to hear things like, yeah, that's right. And then he opens it up and begins to teach you something. Now you may just hear a statement from me. And then from that statement, the Holy Spirit begins to take you on a whole journey. Praise God. That's how the word of God works. So are you ready? Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Oh, the heavens are open over us right now. And Jesus, you fill us with your truth. And we know what you want us to know today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So, listen now. We, we are looking at life lessons from the Bible, praise God. So now I've told you the difference between the Bi the Word of God and what the Bible is. And I told you yesterday, the Bible is a compendium of testimonies, many testimonies, and they are all telling us something. Now I wrote something here. I want you to see the purpose of the Scripture is to make us believe. Praise God. The purpose of the scriptures is to make us believe. John chapter 20 and verse 30 and 31. Now John spoke these words and says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Did you see that? Jesus did several, many, many miracles that are not written. Then he says, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Did you see that? So the reason I'm sharing God's truth with you, the reason you hear every preach, any preacher preach to you is saying this one thing, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will have life through him. Now that's what everything we're going to be, every story we share is going to be saying to you. Now you remember, listen, John chapter 8. Let's, let's go there, John chapter 8. The woman that was brought to Jesus, that, uh, that was caught in the act of adultery. You remember that story, right? <clears throat> now, they brought this woman to Jesus and they said, Master, teacher, that's what they called him. This woman was caught in a very act of adultery. Now Moses have said 
that such should be stoned to death. And they asked Jesus, what do you say? And, and the Bible says, I think that's in verse, let me look at it now. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down. I want you to follow. Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he had them not. Right. So when they continued asking him, he lifted himself and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. Now, they brought this woman and then they said, Okay, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Now, this is Jesus. This is, this is the representation of God on earth right now. And these are clear laws that Moses had given to them. And even morally, adultery is wrong. So they brought this woman to Jesus and said, Hey, look at this situation. What do you say about it? Moses have already told us what to do. You know, you want to ask the question, if Moses have already told you what to do, why are you bringing it to him? See, of course, the Bible said they wanted to tempt Jesus. Now, Jesus now looked at them and said, He that is without sin among you, let him cast let him first cast a stone at her. And when he said that, what did he do? He stooped down and continued writing on the ground. What was he writing? We don't know what he was writing. <laughs> but I can tell you what Jesus was doing. He, when he was writing, now I can tell you this because it's, it's the same experience I have. So, so when you read things like this, you know I know what Jesus was doing. He was there listening to the Spirit of God and, and Lord. You remember it was when they finished asking him the question and he just turned away from them, stooped down and began to write. What do you think Jesus was doing? Jesus was asking the Father's mind concerning this situation. Lord, what do I do about this situation? How do I respond to this issue? And then the word of the Lord came to Jesus. Say, how can the word of God? Oh, yes, the word of God came to Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. It came to Jesus. And he lifted up his eyes and said, Okay, any one of you without sin should first cast a stone at her. And they all began to leave one after the other. And they all left. Now look at what happened. Verse 10. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those thy accusers? Had no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said to, unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Praise God. Now, you want to think this. And, and this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, Have you ever wondered why Jesus just told the woman, I don't condemn you? Why didn't Jesus condemn the woman? Was Jesus condoning adultery? Was Jesus treating adultery as one light thing? I mean, Jesus didn't talk about, hey, what's going to happen to you and your husband now? You were caught in the act of adultery. Can, can I see your husband and, 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 and teach him and both of you need to go through counseling, you know, like we do today. How come Jesus just looked at her and said, go and sin no more? And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I've always wondered. Now, I believe in the words that Jesus said, go and sin no more. Now, truly, that word is powerful enough to make her sin no more. But why did Jesus just treat it like it was a small thing? <laughs> Praise God. I mean, I mean this, this is a big enough to destroy her home. Now, she was caught in the act of adultery, meaning she had a husband. Are you getting what I'm saying? She had a husband. Now, the Lord began to talk to me. He said, I'll tell you why Jesus handled this situation like this. And you'll see this later on in this same chapter from verse 15 when Jesus began to see how we judge. The Lord said this to me. He said, this woman committed adultery. Yes. But what Jesus and what the mind of God was seeing was the one who caused her to commit adultery. Now I'm telling you what the Lord said to me. And I believe him because it's true. His word is true. He said, the Lord, the mind of God dealt with her based on 
the reason she committed adultery. I said, so what could the reason be? And the Lord said to me, he says, her husband caused her to commit adultery. See? And, and he, he was looking for an okay, occasion to, to put her away. He was looking for an occasion to, to marry whoever he wanted to marry. So he began to treat her wrong. He began to do all manner of things against her. And, and the Lord said this to me. He said, do you know it was even the husband that staged this adultery act against her? So it was a planned thing. And she fell into it. And they caught her and they said, now we can deal with you. But it was because of all my little bullshit. Is <laughs> she is not the only woman that has been caught with adultery in that time that Jesus was there? But how come they brought her to Jesus? I'll tell you why. Because God wanted to save her. God wanted to save her. So instead of them taking her to the high priest, and then they will take the judge, they will do the judgment and send out of the city and stone her to death. Someone suggested, hey, 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 hold on, hold on. Before we take this woman to the high priest, let's take her to Jesus. You know, Jesus has been saying he knows everything. Let's take her and let's hear what he will say. So that we'll catch him. And then, and then oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. That, that man that thinks he's a teacher. Let's take her to him. Let's go and tempt him. That was, you remember Joseph when they were about to, you know, remember they were about to kill Joseph. And, and, and someone suggested, hey, instead of leaving him in this pit, these guys are coming. Why don't you just sell him off? God brought a word, see, that brought Joseph's salvation. It's the same way God brought a word to this woman's situation that brought, that made them bring her to Jesus. This is how God is always seeking to save. So why did Jesus just let her go? Because she is not an adulterous woman. Oh. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. She is not an adulterous woman. She was forced to commit adultery. When I mean forced, not, not that they dragged her and they said, you must sleep with this man. No, 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 no. She was emotionally battered and dealt with. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, that's the same thing with lots of people. You know, sometimes people say, eh, eh, they, 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 they set traps for you. They, they, and then they say, oh, you, you did wrong. You've sinned, you've sinned, you've sinned. <clears throat> a husband who will starve his wife of sex. A husband who will starve his wife of care. A husband who will starve his wife for everything that she needs. And then he is out there doing it with others. Or someone else and one day comes and say ah your wife and say ah i'm going to divorce you nonsense i'm going to divorce you hey now i began to hear the lord says you think god is going to judge that woman it is the one who caused her to commit adultery that god is going to judge you know that's what jesus was telling his disciples and then peter spoke up and said hey, master if it is so then it is better not to marry at all yeah See, God doesn't, doesn't judge out of the appearance. He doesn't judge with what you see. He judges the heart. Now, this is one thing you need to understand. God deals with the heart. So when God wants to judge, it's not the same way man judges. And most times when men judge, they don't judge based on God's mind. You see what Jesus did? There was already an established law. Stone her to death. She committed adultery. But Jesus, being smart enough, went to the Lord and said, Lord, what do you think about this situation? And then the word of God came. He said, this is it. Tell them. So when Jesus said, anyone without sin among you should cast the first stone. Now, these were not normal people. These were Pharisees. And let me tell you something about Pharisees. Some of them are truly blameless. Oh yeah, some of them are true. Remember Paul? Paul was a Pharisee. When he was so, he was a Pharisee. Remember, he said it that he was a blameless fellow. In, talk, in terms of self-righteousness now. 
But you know, when Jesus said, anyone without sin among you should cast the first stone, the Holy Spirit began to convict their hearts because what they were doing with this woman in itself was sin. They conspired against her. So the Holy Spirit said, this is your conspiracy. What do you call it? It's true. Ah, it's true. I don't have the moral justification to stone her. And then they all walked in. Praise God. Let me tell you something. It is not every mistake that you make that God judges just because of the act of the mistake. God judges your heart. He judges your intentions. Now, that, that's, you see, man will not see that. He won't. See, that's why you need to stay on with God. Even if man have condemned you, you need to stay with God because he is the one who will eventually justify you. And I pray even right now, if you have been wrongly accused concerning anything, and you know, you know that they are wrong about you, but, but they have judged you already. I hear the Lord say to you that help is coming your way. He's rising up for you and he will justify you and show to everyone that he has justified you. Praise God. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.